Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are doing a just arrived at Sephora. It's been a hot minute since I've done this video. If you're new here, I go through the makeup section of the just arrived page at Sephora on the website. If any of you guys are internet shoppers like me, I am on that page a lot. And I pick out the products that I have from that page and I just tell you what's up with the new stuff. So let's get into it. I'm doing this in alphabetical order of brand. That's how we're doing it. Starting off with the one, the only, Anastasia Beverly Hills. They just launched some new lip products. I didn't pick up too much, but I did pick up one of the new lipsticks to try. I'm always very attracted to the lightest, most nude shade to see what they got. So <laughs> I picked up the shade Haze, and I actually really like the packaging. I think it's really sleek and nice. It's definitely a an upgrade from their previous packaging and this is super duper nude you guys and I don't want to generalize with the whole line just because I only picked up one of the formulas which is a satin. I don't really love this. I find it to be a bit rough on my lips, a bit hard. It feels a little drying even though it does have a satin finish which doesn't really add up to me so it's just not as soft as I would like. I absolutely love the color but I feel like I have to go over too many times. I almost want to try a couple other colors to see if this is consistent throughout the line, but this does not feel like a super high quality lipstick to me. I'm keeping it, I like the color. A lipstick is a lipstick. I mean, it works good, but yeah, I don't love it. Super duper nude. Uh, I do like though, you can kind of change up the tone of this based on whatever lip liner you used. So I used a brown lip liner the first time I used this for like a super brown nude lip. Today I used Buff from Pat McGrath, which is a pinky lip, so now I have a pinky nude lip. So the color itself is versatile, but don't love the formula. Charlotte Tilbury. We will start off with the foundation that she launched. I was so excited. Oops, I just dropped it. When I tell y'all how excited I was to see her launch a new foundation, because it had been a while. This is the Beautiful Skin Foundation. Unfortunately, for some reason, this does not, does not look good on my skin. I feel like this is a foundation whether you love or hate it. And honestly, I feel I feel like you have to have perfect skin to really love this, have no pores or anything like that. When I first apply this, it looks really, really nice, but I find that when I put products over top, like some powder, concealer, my skin looks really heavy. I'm going to continue testing this. I haven't loved it the times that I've used it. It has not worked out for me for some reason, but I've seen a lot of people love it, so go in with an open mind if you are going to try that foundation, but uh, a lot of foundations have come out recently and that one just wasn't amongst the top. Charlotte Tilbury also did launch some new lipsticks for Lunar New Year. These are available obviously at Sephora, otherwise they wouldn't be in this video. I am a sucker for any time Charlotte Tilbury comes out with lipsticks in limited edition packaging. I love to collect her lipsticks and when they come with this nice tiger print, I'm all over it. Now this collection probably wasn't my favorite collection she's launched because they are very deep reddish shades for Lunar New Year. Let's, if I didn't have a review channel, I would not have picked these up. So the lightest shade in here is going to be Only Muse, which is kind of like an orangey coral shade. It's very, very beautiful. I do like this one. It's just not one that I would wear a lot. Uh, Walk of a Star is probably my least favorite. It's kind of like a cranberry red shade here. It's fine. It looks absolutely beautiful, but it's just not something I see myself grabbing for a lot. However, my favorite shade in this collection is K-Romance. It's a really deep raspberry shade. Even though I won't wear this color a lot, I love this color so much that it makes me want to wear this color more. So if I could only buy one, it would be K-Romance. I think it's a stunning, super deep raspberry lip. Recommend this one for sure. I did do a full try-on video if you want to see how these looked on my complexion. They were really beautiful. But at the end of the day, I definitely am a super nude girl. The quality of these are phenomenal. Just not my cup of tea, personally. Ooh, this is a new product that I actually haven't shared with you guys that I picked up. This is from Danessa Myricks. This is the Dewy Cheek and Lip Palette, and I am wearing it today to give me this really pretty corally cheek. Now, I'm quite familiar with this formula. I believe it's the same formula in her, I believe they're like 12 Pam palettes. They're mostly, I would say, geared towards makeup artists, so I 
use those in my bridal kit. I know I really do like this formula so I can give you the tea because today is technically the first day that I tried this but I'm very familiar with this type of formula from her. So she came out with two shades of these. I picked up the lighter shade. How pretty does this look? I'm <laughs> very attracted to this and the prominent color on my cheek is going to be this right here. So some of these have different consistencies like this shade is super goopy almost like a lip gloss and then when you get towards these three they are a little bit more hard which I think makes them easier to work with this I don't know it feels kind of sticky and you probably won't like that on your cheek but it does blend out beautifully on the cheek. It gives a really healthy glow. It does emphasize a little bit of texture as you know any dewy products do. <laughs> but if you like that dewy look on the cheek, you will like this. It works out easily. I would say with the finger is best, but you can also use a sponge. But actually, what I prefer to use these for are lip colors. Now, it's not often that I come across a lip and cheek formula that I like for both cheek and lips. And this is a formula that absolutely is versatile in that manner. But if I had to pick, I love using these for lip colors. They're pigmented. With a lip liner, they have pretty good longevity. They slightly stain the lips. This is a truly great multifunctional formulation. I'm loving how it looks on the cheek. The color will fade though, especially if you put the cheek color down and then you put powder and highlights. The color is going to fade down. So I almost suggest finishing with this. It does pretty well over powder, which is a really great asset to any cream products. And then almost set with a colored powder. If you set with a translucent powder, the color might die down. But if you set with like a coral blush, for example, it's going to last all day. So I would give this like a solid 8 out of 10. It's not perfect, but I personally really enjoy this formula. I do think though that these feel more like lip products and it does feel like you're putting like a lip gloss on your cheek. So if you don't like that texture or that feeling, you might not enjoy this. Let's move on to Dior. You guys know I've been testing a ton of Dior lately, but let's talk about what's come to Sephora. So they reformulated two of their already existing foundations, the Forever Matte and the Forever Skin Glow. And both of these are absolutely beautiful. They're probably my favorite foundations that have launched in the last month. So Forever Matte, phenomenal. This is a great event foundation. It lasts a long time. It looks pretty healthy on the skin. It's not too drying. It's super long wearing. I have nothing bad to say about this. If you like matte foundations, you will love this. I know a lot of people aren't so into matte foundations nowadays. It's all about the glow, but I'm telling you that foundation is so long wearing that your glow will come through and it will look beautiful. This one is probably fight in for first place of all the new foundations I've tried recently. The other foundation that I like, not as much as the Forever Matte, but I really like this, is the Forever Skin Glow. I'm wearing it on this side of my face right now. Again, it looks super healthy on the skin. It's not quite as long wearing as the matte as it shouldn't be, and I feel like it kind of takes up and oils up a little bit at the end of the day, but it still is a fabulous glowy foundation if you're looking into those glowy finishes on the skin. So I think they did a really nice job with this one as well. Dior in general just did a phenomenal job reformulating these foundations to be clean and I'm really happy with how they turned out. Okay so I don't have too much experience with this but I've been playing with these new Kosas 10 second eyeshadows. So they just reformulated these. I did not try the previous formulation so I can't tell you whether it was improved or not but I can tell you from my wear today and yesterday that I've really been enjoying these. I truly see why they call these 10 second eyeshadows because you can literally get your eyeshadow done in 10 seconds. I'm going to show you the swatches here. I do find these to be pretty long wearing um, and you can see on the swatch demo that I did I rub my hand after it sitting on my hand for about five minutes these did not budge and it really impressed me how easy they were to apply there's no patchiness at all you can literally just swipe it on it doesn't get crackly or cake up too much or get too thick because there's some liquid products you know where you can't put them directly with the doe foot onto the eyelid because they'll get flaky these don't they are perfect and then all you do is you just blend the top a little bit just to blend into your eye and seriously 10 seconds you're good to go now these aren't 
aren't intensely metallic or anything, which is typically what I go for if I'm going to use something in a liquid format. I have this all over my lid. You can see it is a simple, simple shimmer, but it's so quick and easy to apply. You can throw it in your purse. It's not going to break. It does everything that it is intended to do. Now, the only shade I'm unsure about is Swatch a Little Patchy is Electric. I haven't tried this one yet all over the lid. I used it today as an inner corner highlight, but hopefully this one doesn't get patchy, but the rest were fine. Right now, I'm currently wearing Rose Gold or Heat, I guess is the name, all over my lid. It is so stunning. I really enjoy these. I think they're really nice and quick and easy. Probably not a formula that I go for often. If I'm using a liquid shadow, I want something super glimmery. But I have to say, you literally can get an eye look in like 10 seconds. It's super easy, no makeup makeup. I definitely recommend these. All right, now we're moving on to NARS. I only have one product. This is the new Light Reflecting Foundation. I love this foundation. I'm wearing it on this side of my face. Today I'm testing to see if I like the Dior Forever Skin Glow more or the NARS. When I used the NARS alone, I was convinced that this was my new favorite foundation. Um, it's definitely my favorite foundation that NARS has ever come out with in my opinion. It, the only thing I didn't like about it is it sunk into my smile lines really fast. You can kind of see it starting down here, but it's still looking really good. I'm still in the very beginning stages of the comparison, so I don't know if I like this or the Dior better, but I think I think I like this one better. Again, we'll see how it wears. If you like a medium coverage, a really thin consistency because it is quite watery and a natural glowy finish, you are gonna love this. This is to a T my preference for an everyday foundation. So I've absolutely loved this thus far, but I'm still testing it to see these rankings. I will have a foundation's rankings coming very soon. Natasha Denona, these are fairly new. They're on the older side of new, but I thought I'd talk about them in case you were maneuvering through the Just Arrive page. So this was her most recent launch. She launched mini Biba palette and a rose cheek duo. Let's start off with the mini Biba palette. I currently am wearing some of the mattes in my crease. I really like this palette. I think it's a solid palette. I think the quality in here is really nice. It's personally not a must have for me. I definitely feel like you probably have these shades already in your collection if you have somewhat of an accumulation of makeup. However, if you are looking for the Natasha Denona formula and everyday look on the go, I think you will really like this. So if this is a color story that you're into, you will like it. It's just one of her more boring color stories, which is why I'm not super in love with it, but I can't deny the quality. It works super good. Also in that launch, we have the Rose Cheek Duo. I'm kind of on the fence with this. I don't think I necessarily recommend it. Mine looks disgusting right now, but the cream blush itself is not my favorite. I feel like it can look a little gunky on the cheek and kind of disrupt what's going on underneath. It's just not the best cream blush formulation. I feel like Natasha right now is really playing around with her different cream blush formulations to find the best one because I feel like all the little cream blushes she's come out with recently have all felt really different and worked different. This one personally just wasn't working for me. However, I do really like the highlight. It's not a blush highlight. It's something a little bit more subtle and wearable and I think it could be a little bit deep if you're more on the fair side but if you're like light medium like me this is the perfect everyday highlights. I mean Natasha has a phenomenal highlight formulation and in here I mean it's nothing short of that. I really love it. I used a fan brush to apply it and it just left the prettiest everyday glow. I like it but I don't necessarily recommend it because I don't love the cream blush which is half of what you're paying for. Hi um I'm filming this on a different day but I had an addition to this video so since I filmed this the Natasha Denona Valentine's exclusive set the mini crush eyeshadow palette and eyeshadow brush kit came out. Um, I'm wearing it today. I just wanted to put it in this update as well since it's new. This is a big solid okay. I mean, it's definitely repeatable. If you have the mini love and the midi love, I don't think that you need this. And if you're debating between the two, I prefer last year's Valentine's Day launch, the mini love, which is still available. If you have the midi love, honestly, you can get very, very similar looks with the two. Okay, the quality in this is great. It's fine. It's good, Natasha to know no quality. I just am not in love with the color story, but obviously that comes down to personal preference. It's what I have on my eyes today. It's a really great Valentine's Day gift. Really cute for that. So quality wise, it's good, but I don't know if you care about my opinion. It's not my favorite. I prefer these two over this new mini crush. I wish you would have gone a little bit more of a unique route for Valentine's Day since Natasha is such a genius when it comes to color stories. 
Guys, I know one of you uh, suggested on my lives, like something orangey, peachy, instead of just true bright, bright pink, because this is a bright pink palette. If you don't like pink looks, you're not gonna like this. So <laughs> yeah, quality is fine, but it's not my favorite palette from her. I wasn't too excited about this. And sorry, I forgot to mention this. Four of these shades are already existing in the Natasha Denona line. This is in the Metropolis palette. This is in the Midi Love palette. This is in the Safari palette. And this is in the Cranberry palette. So there's only one truly unique shade in this palette. So that is also something to consider if you're going to pick it up. I do not recommend it, but it also isn't a palette that I would push you to get from Natasha Denona, if that makes sense. I think there's others that I like better personally. I've talked about this plenty, so I'm gonna breeze by it, but the Pat McGrath collection did come to Sephora on the 26th. The eyeshadow palette, I like it. It's not my favorite palette that Pat has ever come out with. You have to really love these colors to enjoy this palette. I personally really enjoy the quality, uh, but I did notice a lot of the looks that I do kind of look the same because there's so many pinks in here and you kind of have to almost use the pinks as the base. You can only change it up slightly. There's only so many variations of looks that you can do, but if you really like the color story, I think you will like this. I do enjoy the quality to it. I've had a lot of fun with it and I love the packaging. The Love at First Blush Trio I think is great if you don't have any of these formulations already. I personally did own these individually, but I did pick this up because I am a Bridgerton fan. But if you like a pink blush, like a pink cheek, then you will like this. If you don't like pink blushes, do not buy this. But you can't go wrong with getting this formulation in a, at a pretty good value. I love both of these blushes. They're going to last forever. They're going to blend out beautifully. Mm, phenomenal quality. And the highlight is also very flattering as well. It's not going to look the best on light to light medium skin tones. But if you have a medium, oh, this is made for you highlight wise. It's great. I just already own this stuff. Okay, last and final brand of new launches is Rare Beauty. They've been killing it lately. We'll start off with the bronzer sticks. Oh my gosh, these are one of my new favorite bronzer sticks. If you're around my skin tone, I recommend the shade Happy Soul. This one is a little bit cool toned. I think this is probably going to be the most universal shade. I also did pick up Always Sunny, but this one is really warm, but and it also ended up being honestly just too deep on me, so I don't really love this shade. But these blend out like a dream. You only need to pat. You don't need to swipe. You don't need to put really any elbow grease into blending these out. They are so emollient and beautiful. I love that shade, Happy Soul. I think it's really pretty. Just a really great solid cream bronzer. We also have the new Dewy Liquid Blushes. They did send these to me recently. I haven't played with all of the shades on my cheeks. So just be warned. The shade Hope is the lightest one. This one's really pretty. Uh, let me show you. I, I love her dewy blush formula. I think these are so pretty. This one has like a little hint of rose to it. So this launch I really like because they all have that pretty neutral rosy undertone to them, which I think uh, is probably the most universally flattering shade. You can see how beautifully that blended out. Less is more <laughs> with these blushes. These are going to last you your whole lifetime because you really only need one dot. And they do leave a pretty fresh, dewy kind of glow to the skin. It's not as dewy as the Danessa Myricks, which is underneath, but it leaves a healthy dew to the skin. The other two shades that we have are Encourage, which is a little bit more pinky, and then Believe, which has a little bit more mauve to this. I love how deep this is. I feel like this is going to work on those of you that have a richer complexion. These are a very, very solid blush formula if you haven't tried them yet but the key to these is less is more but generally speaking this formula has already existed what is special about this launch are the undertones they're that beautiful neutral rose undertone so pretty and then finally the last formula that i have to tell you about is the rare beauty setting powder i have mine in the shade light medium this powder runs pretty dark i would say light medium stuff usually works on my skin tone this makes me look a little bit more tan than i actually am this is a formula i'm unsure about personally i'm not in love with it i know when i'm in love with things and i'm not in love with this but i really can't figure out what it does it does kind of soften in the face and it has a very very subtle glow to it but I don't think it's anything amazing in my routine. I'm very happy to have it. I'm really excited to do full face of Rare Beauty videos like that with this powder. I 
will definitely hold on to it. It's not bad. It doesn't do anything that I'm not in love with on my makeup, uh, but it's just kind of there. It just kind of sets my makeup and I don't really notice it doing too much more after that. So anyways, here we have it. Those are all of the new products that I've tried that just arrived at Sephora and my little two cents on them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. That's why I'm here. And thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. And if you haven't done it yet, you can go ahead and do it. Much appreciated. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.